Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday, which is... Oh, it's back to me. Have you learned your lesson, Dad? No, I, I gave up. <laughs> I didn't learn it. I gave up on All it. All right, Rare Whiskey Friday, we're gonna go through and sample several different whiskeys, giving first impressions on a lot of rare whiskeys, not necessarily large brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on one of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the Magnificent. You're like, so close! So close! So, so close! I didn't even psych you out. You didn't. That I tried insane. to stay out I of here. got in my head. Thank you to the Magnificent Bastards <laughs> of Synthesis. <laughs> okay, so we got two things. Here's the thing. Yeah. We don't normally do this. I'm gonna do this as a favor. Uh huh. Because Jer sent, Jer Slokar sent these things from homemade from a long ways away. Okay. Right? Yeah, and we don't, brought them we don't, himself. We, we, don't do we don't review non whiskey things. These are non whiskey things. Okay. I just, we're just gonna hit them really quickly. Sure. Now, one of these is essentially a gin, but made with wine distillate instead of grain distillate. So, a wine distillate with herbs added. It's called Made from Herbs. <laughs> That's a romantic name right there. That's just it elicits, way, it elicits feelings. Jer, and, Jer was still gonna magnetize me. The romance, the Jer countryside. Says. Jer, <laughs> you want me to bastard in this? are not whiskey. Jer, you magnificent, magnificent bastard. bastard. No, he's saying stuff. You magnificent bastard. <laughs> okay, so the, the non-gin, gin, gin thing from herbs is, is this one. I'm gonna pour that in your glass. <laughs> and I'll keep Ooh. that over there. Ooh, that's that's uh, new makey and, and, and herb. Ooh, and herby and what does he get like a... Whoa! Oh. oh yeah, there's a mustiness, there's a heavy, heavy did he go black the, licorice. Yeah, did he go in the tails a little bit to get That is licorice? star and anise and there's almost cucumber. In there, mm -hmm. I'm getting some. He got of, some low tail I'm, must in I'm there, man. Almost like a spearmint. It poured in my hands, and I'm smelling it. Oh, I don't want to do that. It's like a spearmint almost on that. On the yeah, on this the is black licorice and a spearmint dominant, like grass note. Wow, it's that's bizarre. I, I almost grabbed it to read the label. And yeah, that's not really a thing. Oh, it's so licorice. It's new but, make and but, licorice, but it's actually. And the taste, there's no fault funks and sulfur notes. And there's not an incredible amount of sugar, right? There is this on the is, taste. Really? Yes. Okay, on the nose, I'm just getting like that licorice character. It's almost candied. It's almost hotly licorice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And herby. Yeah, like if it was hot cinnamon candy. Yeah. This is hot licorice. Boom. Oh yeah, there's a spearmint too, right behind it. It's almost like a little bit of a candy root beer. Yeah. Candy root beer finish. You ever had the candy root beer shaped like little barrels? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure and out. Now finish, that's. The finish I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Okay, now the other one is made from khaki. K A K I. Khaki. 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 Are we corking? Khaki. This one. Woo! Hang on. This one is a fruit. It's distilled from fermented khaki fruit. I don't know what a khaki fruit is. <laughs> is it like a banana? It's, it's fruit. Like a banana. <laughs> it's fruit. Plantains. It's distilled, Cuc fermented. Cucumbers are vegetables. Cocky fruit. <laughs> Damn it. It all falls apart. We're, <laughs> just, We're only at the beginning of it. It just of takes a non whiskey for it to all fall apart. Oh, this is weird. Don't, don't hog it, man. Fuck, fuck, give. It's got this weird. Oh, the taste. This is the reverse. The yeah. smell is densely. Wow. Heavy, musty sweetness. Yeah. Like like overly overripe fruit dense sweetness. So the taste is flat. The, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a note in your head. Not sweet at all. Forest cranked to eleven. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like you know what it reminds me of is when you go in those candle shops. Like in the yeah. mall, where it's only candles and they walk in and it says like forest earth. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you take the can, it's like, it's not forest earth, it's a candle yeah. overly scented with things. It smells like that. It tastes not as sweet as it wow, smells. much more subtle. Yes. On the taste. These are the reverse. Yeah. Smell slightly mild and licorice, and, and then, then bam! Yeah, yeah. Smell dramatic taste. Huh. But the, the actual flavors that are there, you don't have to go hunting. 
Very, very ple like pleasant flavors, mm -hmm. and I can absolutely see that turning into nice stuff. I don't know, no, I don't know enough necessarily. It's going to be a neat pour. No, I would, uh, I would drink that neat the way that you would drink Fernet Blanc, uh, like Fernet neat, like a, right. like an aperitif kind I, of like botanical. Yeah, I would yeah. want to make some cocktails around that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that could yeah, be cool. Some beautiful cocktails. Yeah. yeah. There's no real faults in that distillate. No, no, no. no. Yeah. yeah, it's a low cut, well, and, I do, and it's definitely pot still. And I do like how it's not catering to a mass market palate of here's a really candy, sweet, easy sipping thing. Well, not American are, mass palate. Those are unique flavors, um, unapologetically like present. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're good. There's a lot you could do with those. This is from Patrick Larkin, patron saint of whiskey. Patrick Larkin. You patron saint of whiskey. Come on, old man. One of these days. Come on, old man. One of these days, I'm going to put a mat back here, and at the end of a patron saint, I'm just going to fall <laughs> flat out onto it, as you can't see out of... Um, okay. I've, I've looked for the crash pads or what they're yeah. called. I don't know where we, where we would store it, though. Ah, it's a pain in the ass, right. the idea of a crash pad, yeah. No, it's so... The things we could do. I could build a rock climbing on the ceiling. Mostly Pratt Falls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all Pratt Falls. Okay, this is our cola whiskey. I can't there's find a, it. There's like a smoke, anything there's about like a these guys. Smoky character to this. This is a distillery, uh, our cola distillery in Carpenter, Wyoming. They, as far as I can find, do not have a website. They have a Facebook page that's barely got any information on it. I don't know anything about this other right. than it says they dis they made it themselves. Okay. They didn't source it. Yeah. And it says premium whiskey. But we don't know what it is. From Wyoming. Yeah, so it's it's generic whiskey. There's a train on the label. So I don't know what the mash bill is. It's not dominant bourbon rye or anything. A train. It's cloudy, even in the glass. Oh, yeah, no chill filtering. Okay. So we know that. It's musty, like funk. Like I almost so, got so, a weird bacon note. Uh, but but the smokiness from a bacon. Like the yeah. smoke. Uh, I'm getting... Uh, a smoky kind of note. Not Isla smoke. We're not anywhere near there, but there is an element. No, but there is a, it's yeah. a proteiny, meaty smoke. Yeah. Right? Mm, interesting. That is bizarre. Again, unique. Totally unique. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's so wood smoky. Proof down. What's the proof on that? 40. Okay. Yeah, tastes it's like flat it. It's flat and smoky. It is. That is bizarre. You know what? I know based on the nose, this has a lot more nuance to give with those flavors. If but it was it, higher. It doesn't show up at 40. You know, I think they were going, I mean, they, it, it seems like they're a really small operation. So my guess is that they went for 40 just to get a more of a bottle count. Sure. But still, it just, all that remains yeah. is the slight sweetness of a grain spirit and the ashy... Finish. That's yeah. That's really it. Just the sweet green spirit. Not incredibly. Yeah, this is a frustrating thing. It's not incredibly uh, complex. It's not really nuanced. But so, with those notes that are there, at least on the nose, that are yeah. unique enough and present present enough on the nose, you know, this a little bit higher proof. It'd be so it, at least uh, worth exploring. Right now at forty percent is so low. It's just not a lot to explore. I'm gonna blow your mind a little bit. Okay. This is whiskey distilled from a bourbon mash. Which means, in theory, it's a corn-dominant recipe, okay. but probably stored in used barrels instead of new barrels. Oh, so which they can't makes call it, it bourbon. Right. But never in a million years would I put this in the even bourbon mash category. Right. Um, you like, get, I would never put this as corn-dominant mash. Don't get honey, brown sugar, cherry. Nothing. Even the oakiness isn't where's really Where's the there? ashiness coming from? I don't know, man. I wonder if they... Smoked if they got peated barley as part of their yeah, but then again to to go to that extra step that extra effort and not put that somewhere in the story and the yeah like the website the bottle label I don't know that's that's a unique thing a fairly interesting thing to do and not get credit for it that's bizarre okay hmm. let's move on and I'm gonna get new glasses because and this is important this is important Rex are you ready emotionally for what is about to happen. That is a gift from Kevin Munoz to both of us. I, you ready? I'm, do I have to answer before I say yes. this? Yes. Am I? Yes. I got this. It's on lockdown. Okay. A new black art. Oh, the 92. 5.1. Oh my God. 
Ooh. It's not the one that you had with no, the No, no, that was the 91. Yeah. This is Luna. Looks yeah. Like. This is um, Omnia Ab Una things. Sure. Kevin yeah. Munoz, truly a magnificent bastard. Kevin Munoz, you magnificent bastard. I, this is how we end Rare Whiskey Friday. Are you ready? Is that, oh, is that like a cheerleader kick? <laughs> You're not getting to see the heel kick. That's your back up so they can see the heel kick. That's really making it. Yes, that was it. <laughs> that was the full view. I really want to. I was really want Was it worth it? I really want an animated GIF of that. I can give you that to you anytime. Okay. Available upon request. <laughs> yeah, fuck upon request. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, we are the fifth incarnation. We are fans of the Black Art. Yes, one of my favorite. If I had to pick a top 10 list, Black Art is going to end up on it. Yeah. Now this one, you know, people, they always ask me my favorite whiskey, right? I don't know. It's wow. changing pretty often. And I often forget about things that I fell in love with a couple days ago. I think my favorite distillery, though, it Brooklady. very damn well may be Brooklady. Yeah. They're just doing so much between the Dude. Octomore and the, uh, the Black Coming Iron. from everything else that we've done today, this is weird smelling. That well, sherry sweet funk is. Yeah. Do we have any water? Uh, I want to. Yeah. I want to go in kind of fresh. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's the one we've been pouring from. Actually, it won't matter. Here, have some water. That's yours now. Take it with you. <sighs> Sweeter than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me make sure. Sweeter and uh, like a jammy fruit, like a jammy fruit preserves. You get that? Yes! Fruit preserves is absolutely the right yeah. direction. Wow. That's, the, so, that's dominating the nose. Recently, someone gave me some actual preserves in little jars that their grandmother made. Mm -hmm. And there was strawberry, and there was a peach one, and there was a grape, you know, there's... And definitely has, you open it up, that densely sugar-coated top, but, but of fruit. Oh, I can't wait to try this. This is Adam Hannett's... Ooh. Oh. Oh! So there's this thing that happens. There's a little bit of... There's this thing that happens with the Black Arts. 24 years old. The character of this with the jammy fruit preserves on the nose is different than the 91. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, totally different whiskey. But I think the commonality between the two is there is this... Uh, this is going to sound convoluted and it's not going to make any sense. But with the Black Arts that I've had, there's like this upper... Um, almost like a glass ceiling that allows the flavors to get to so nothing ever gets too dominant, yeah. too overwhelming, Subtle. to the other flavors, too spiky. You have a lot of complexity, but it's also not complex because it's so loud. Right. It's complex because everything falls underneath this top glass ceiling, this, this barrier that keeps everything under this certain volume. Uh, but then it's all intermingling with each other. Have you ever been to a symphony? Yeah. I'm classy. It reminds me of the symphonic parts where everyone's playing, but they're not all at fortissimo. Oh, yeah. and they're not going gong, 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 gong. It's just everyone's doing things. Right. And they're all moving in and out of each other, and people are starting and stopping patterns, and there's all this in intricacy. But it's sort of there's a name for that approachable and soft and beautiful. What's, I forgot the name. What's the name to that in the comments? What's the name to that? The orchestra they're playing. No, it's just orchestration. As no, it is, they're like but, but whenever there's before, before they get to the yeah, there's the, so the instruments all swell up and they're individually making sure they're all in tune and everything. Mm. And oh, 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 yeah. oh, the like yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. But that's actually. That's uh, what I'm. What are you? You're thinking, thinking of like when originally when there's no music being played, right. that you're everyone's just, sort of like it all ah, swells up, yeah, and then the doctor goes, and everyone stops. No, but it's all it's everybody at the same time, right? Kind of like the you know the movie theaters, the Dolby. <laughs> there's an orchestra, and it hits every speaker. Right, and, yeah, right, right. But in, in, you got an orchestra, and then the, all the things kind of they're playing around and the, individually, and then they all swell up, and then they come back down, and then they tap, 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 and then they launch into the. The music. That's when everyone's tuning is what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What are you talking about there? How I'm talking about an actual piece. So when you start a piece, you go from like this section and then this section's added. This is at the point when everyone in the orchestra is playing, uh -huh. but you haven't yet gone for the big finish. Oh, so the... So everyone's doing things. Before the beat drops. 
It's the sim- this right before the symphonic beat drops, <laughs> which is always so, done by the bassoon. You keep going. <laughs> 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 the bassoon player always walks out with swag. With a little reed. <laughs> yeah. Well, the swaggers because bassoon, those are orchestra jokes. You want to hear my orchestra joke? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Wait, but you have to be uh, understand orchestra to get the joke. There's two. Uh, there's t- <laughs> really there's two first violin. There's a first and second violin in the front, and uh, it turns out the conductor is sick, and so one of the people comes up to the first violin and he's like. Tilda. So he's running, he's sick, he's running late. He's gonna make it, he's running late. So the first violin gets up there and tap, tap, gets, and they just conducts the whole first piece. And finally the conductor comes from off the wings, he's recovered, and the first violin sits back down and the conductor gets back up. Conductor's moving through his notes, and the second violin turns to the first violin and goes, Dude, where have you been? <laughs> 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 Did you get it? Bassoon, bitch! I felt like the episode was going along swimmingly. Was, oh, until, until the orchestra We joke. got this black art in here. We're talking about talking about this glass ceiling of flavors. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. We're making some good points here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the way they intermingle, right? We're sounding fancy with we're talking about orchestral things, and you come in here. You come in here. <laughs> With his hot garbage. That's not hot garbage. With his hot garbage. Have my back, orchestra people. Hot Musicians garbage. Musicians you know. Hot garbage. All right, so here's the thing about this that keeps catching me off guard. Yeah. This is supposedly unpeated, right? I, yeah, I'm not finding pee. No, no, but there is a finish to this that reaches this, like, wood spicy slight pepper that if I was drinking this without knowing... I might attribute to a Highland-style peated malt that would wood peat, earthy peat, not briny, not Isla peat, but this wood mulch, wood spice note. See, you could almost one-fifth of the way convince me that the peat would be a very watered-down briny peat. Mm. I'm not getting wood spice here. I'm getting... Almost a little bit of really soft, salt watery finish. Salt watery finish? Yeah, really yeah. soft. I could be argued either direction on that one. Okay. I still go back to the, uh, it, what it's reminding me of is Highland peated malts that don't taste peaty. Either way, where's the front of this thing? There's no such thing. Yeah. Either way, it's a beautiful whiskey. <laughs> All right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, make you steal your liver starts. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.